Well, uh, thank you, Mark, for being part of Valley Advocate Sessions tonight. Yeah, my pleasure, pleasure to have you on. Thank you, man. Um, first of all, I, I noticed uh, you play pretty much with a capo. Do you, do you play in like alternate tunings with, with your um, songs? Or? No, I, I, right now I think just for functionality sake of some newer material, I have this guitar tuned down a whole step. So some of my older songs I have to kind of capo up. Okay, so I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I, I was just yeah. curious about that. I figured I'd start with that. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I don't really play in too many fancy tunings, though. I have hard enough time with the traditional one. Gotcha. <laughs> um, so, um, can you tell me how you got started uh, uh, with your songwriting? Oh, man. I, uh, I think I was writing songs and, like, for the first time, like, really bad songs in like 1986 or 7 or something like that and uh, it was probably like uh, throwaway crap metal you know <laughs> and then I you know I discovered hardcore and punk rock and stuff and that that's where I kind of immersed myself but I was like I started playing music because of Eddie Van Halen so I would sit in my room and just I dated my guitar for like five or six years and um, so I can play all that kind of stuff and and I really didn't feel like it was my voice or whatever, so. Um, it was cool to like discover punk rock and hardcore bands in the late 80s, mid, mid to late 80s, because it kind of gave validation to the fact that my thought processes weren't really the same as the rest of the world. <laughs> and uh, it was a really, really wonderful time to be alive in the music world and, and to experience a, like a, a paradigm shift, you know? Yeah. And uh, at the same time, I was really always interested in all kinds of you know, music that was not necessarily on the grid, not because it wasn't uh, like I couldn't handle that or something, and like Hall and & Oates and like Tears for Fears are some of my <laughs> favorite bands, you know. Um, but I always was intrigued to dig deeper, and so I, I studied jazz for a long time and was kind of immersed in that. And then, um, yeah, singer-songwriters, Elliot Smith was a big influence early when I, you know, when I first heard him, and and local guys like Lou Barlow, who happens to be a friend too, so you know, kind of set a stage for us and, uh, nerds to be able to have a, a voice that was validated, you know. So it's been a long time. I guess I've been writing songs for a long time. So, uh, so um, do you think uh, that the, like early punk influence uh, is still kind of present in the acoustic music you're performing? Yeah, I don't think that there's any difference at all. You know. Um, I mean, other than the obvious things, volume, you know, and um, but I've always kind of tried to put the same intensity into whatever it is that I'm doing, even if it's like, you know, happier sounding or quieter. I think, you know, as an ethos, like the hardcore thing is still there, which is to just be really brutally honest. I'm in recovery. I'm a, a drank myself to death not that long ago, handfuls of years ago, and and uh, that. Um, you lie a lot when you're an addict, you know? I did, I, I lied constantly, and uh, the only place I wasn't lying throughout like 20 years was, you know, in my music, so. It's kind of cool to not only understand the therapeutic element of music, but to, you know, kind of embrace um, just how important it is in telling my whole story. Hmm. That's really pretentious, man. <laughs> it's not that pretentious. I don't mean to be that dude. <laughs> No, I get it. <laughs> I'm gonna like go to the mall later and play a video game. Or something, so. <laughs> I'm totally not that guy. So, so, so you mentioned addiction as like one topic that you tend to write about, yeah. uh, just from a personal perspective. Uh, is there anything else that uh, kind of keeps popping up in, in your songs as far as like themes? Usually that, you know. I mean, that's the biggest, darkest thing. And, and I, I always wrote. I was always drawn to writing darker things because it was a chance for me to get all of it out. I mean, I don't know. If I had owned a gun and didn't play music, I probably would have killed somebody a long time ago, you know? And I don't mean that to be facetious or stupid or, or, or you know. I, I, I've dealt with a lot of, like, internalized anger and frustration and depression and anxiety and stuff, so... Um, I like to write about the dark things so I can try to live in the light. That gotcha. makes sense? Yeah. So, um, I'm not this depressing. It's, <laughs> I feel terrible with, you know, I play shows a lot, and it's, I, well, not a lot anymore, but when I do, I really enjoy, um, like, halfway through realizing that my 
songs. I feel like made everybody miserable. <laughs> like somebody paid money to come out and be miserable. Oh, that's cool though. Like people keep coming, so that's nice. So, um, have you released any uh, records? Or are you planning to release anything in the future? Yeah, yeah. I just put a record out, and uh, I've had records out for years under my own name, um, dating back to like 2003 or so. And I just put out a record called White Flood that I recorded all at home, at well, at my friend Joel's home. Joel's in his band Kill Switch Engage, and uh, as you can hear from my songs, it's. I don't really sound like Kill Switch Engage. <laughs> so it was just the two of us, and he's he's one of my best friends, and it was this really intimate way of making a record, so I'm really happy with that part of the process. And then I just put out the outtakes from it, which is like a six-song EP, and those are all on Bandcamp. So, okay. yeah, and I've got another record that we've started. So. Uh, could you tell me about the uh, one you're working on? Yeah, the first song that I played is actually going to be from that, and it was about losing a friend last year to uh, this disease thing it seems to swallow people whole um, in my life on a regular basis. But um, yeah, I think it's because of that, it triggered a bunch of like songs that were really dense and really, really down. So <laughs> it's, I think it was a, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I think I've used the joke in the past, like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a sadder song now <laughs> after like playing three really sad songs, you know. But um, again, we're doing it at his house, and then we're talking about starting a band as well. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, shows coming up, uh, maybe early October, yeah. heading into November? That's, That's nice. probably when your uh, video will be released. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, the first, on the October 9th, I'm playing with Matthew Cause from Not a Surf at the Iron Horse, which will be great. We've um, kind of interwoven throughout the years with the mutual company. I worked for Lloyd Cole for a long time as a guitar player. I mean, I guess I still kind of do studio stuff and whatnot, but he's a dear friend, and Matthew's close with his old drummer, Fred, and who worked with us. It's just this really incestuous circle, so I'm really excited because <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of that band. So, yeah, that's on the 9th. All right, uh, well, thanks so much uh, for being a part of Sessions. Well, thank uh, you, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right.